Hi, welcome to Roy's RCTV. If you're new to electric flight, it won't be very long before you realise that the lithium polymer, the LiPo battery, now dominates the hobby, from the smallest indoor models to the largest. The LiPo battery is the first choice for electric flyers. But if you're new to the hobby, do you understand the jargon that goes along with them? In this video, I hope to explain some of that jargon and demystify the world of the LiPo battery. Okay, so let's get started with some of the basics. Uh, volts. This is a unit of electrical pressure. Or, to use a plumbing analogy, uh, it's like your water pressure. The higher the pressure, the faster it pushes the energy around the circuit, the more work the energy can do. So there's a link between volts and amps. Our next term is the amp. The amp is a measure of electrical current flow in the circuit. And to use the plumbing analogy, it's the speed at which the water flows around the pipes. This can be expressed in whole units as the amp, or in multiples of a thousand, i.e. the milli or the microamp. Amps are important. We need to know how many our motor is drawing in order to make sure that our speed controllers, motors and batteries can handle the, handle the amount of current. Next, we have battery capacity, or cell capacity. This is the amount of usable energy that your battery or cells can hold. To use your plumbing analogy again, it's the size of your water tank. For batteries, this is expressed as amps per hour, or amp hours. Or for the smaller batteries, we express it as milliamp hours. So the amp hour is the amount of current you can draw from your battery over a given time. So for example, a thousand milliamp hour battery, or one amp hour, means you can draw one amp for an hour, or two amps for half an hour, or four amps for a quarter. But whatever current you draw, the amount of energy remains the same. So if you have a 10 gallon tank, it doesn't matter how fast you let the water out, you still have 10 gallons. Although, if you've just let the water out, you won't have 10 gallons. Anyway, um, moving on. <clears throat> what have we got next? Uh, this leads us on nicely to C rating. This refers to the maximum amount of current you can draw safely from the battery without destroying the cells. Typically, this is 10C, 15C, 20C, something like that. Now, we know that C is the capacity of the battery, so 20C would be 20 times the capacity. So, for a 1000 milliamp hour battery, or we'll go back to 1 amp hour, that would be 1 times 20. So, our maximum current would be 20 amps, and that would be the maximum continuous current we could draw from the battery without damaging the cells. The rating for the battery can be suffixed by the term continuous, sustained, peak or burst. Each of these refer to the length of time that the current can be drawn before damage is done to the battery. Continuous is self-explanatory, although at 20C you, the battery would be exhausted in about three minutes. Sustained is a current for a maximum period of 30 seconds in any one charge cycle. Peak or burst current is for a maximum period of 10 seconds in any one charge cycle, and you ignore that at your peril. Right, having got the basics out of the way, let's move on to uh, a bit more jargon. Nominal voltage. Now this is something I know causes confusion. The LiPo cell has a nominal voltage of 3.7 volts. Now this is not the actual voltage you would get if you were to put a voltmeter across the cell. It's a standard value or a theoretically expected value for the cell. And we use it just to make uh, calculations simpler. In reality, if you put a voltmeter across the cell, you would see anything from 3 to 4.2 volts, depending on the, the load and the charge state of the cell. Anything outside those limits, and then your cell's in trouble. But we'll, we'll leave that for another day. OK, so uh, a LiPo battery has a nominal voltage of 3.7 volts, but in general we use battery packs with more than one cell, normally two, three or four for a typical uh, model aeroplane. These configurations uh, are referred to as 2S, 3S, 4S. Now the S stands for in series, and the cells are connected in series. This means the positive terminal of one cell is connected to the negative terminal of the next cell, and so on. 
Okay, and here I have a lovely little drawing as an example for you. This then multiplies the nominal voltage by the number of cells. So say for a, a three cell pack, we would have 3.7 times three, which gives us 11.1. .1. On the subject of configuration, there's one other term that we, you may come across, P. P stands for in parallel. So you may come across a pack that is a 3S, 3P. Now this means that the battery packs are connected in parallel. So all the red terminals are connected together and all the black terminals are connected together. We do this to make up larger capacity batteries but keeping the voltage the same. It's just like uh, in plumbing, the more tanks you have, the more capacity you have. Okay, let's have a recap. The volt is a unit of electrical pressure and LiPo batteries come and in 3.7 volts, 7.4 and 11.1 .1 volts, depending on the number of cells connected in series. The amp is a unit of electrical current flow and the ampere is the electrical capacity or how much energy the battery stores. Right, I hope you're all still with me so far and you haven't fallen asleep. And if you have, then I'm talking to myself and that's not the first time that's happened. Right, um, moving on down my list. Having taken all that energy out of the battery, we need to think about putting some uh, energy back into it. So we're now to move on to the charging current. This again is based on the battery's capacity. Most LiPos have a normal charge rate of 1C. So that's once charged times the capacity. And that's the maximum amount of current you can put into the cells without damaging them. So, with our 1000 milliamp hour pack, the charge rate would be 1000 milliamps or 1 amp. Well, I hope you're still awake and that I've managed to demystify some of the jargon that goes along with the lithium polymer battery. Now, don't forget, if you'd like to know more or to see more of Roy's RCTV, then click on the subscribe button and you'll be one of the first to know the next time we post a video. Okay, thank you for watching Roy's RCTV. See you again next time. Goodbye.